This is going to be a quick overview of our newer series, the Prime Series Recorders. Now, right off the bat, you should notice this looks entirely different from our EL series if you're familiar with them. The first thing I noticed was there is no camera grid. If you want to see, you know, if you want to click on a camera, you can see it will, it will outline it in yellow. But at the main view, there will be no camera grid. You'll just see all your cameras. Now, what you can do, you can right click, okay, and you have a few options here. First thing is single screen. If you want to see camera, say camera four, you want to see it full screen, just click just like that. Now, you want to go to camera five, where well, you can come down here, and you have next. Next will take you to the, the next channel. Now, we can go to six, and same thing, you want to go in reverse, previous. Or, if you didn't want to do that, you can just hover here and choose the camera you want. Same thing if you want to see it in multi-view. Multi-screen, you can choose only four cameras, you know, two and two. You have an option for, you know, one big channel and five. And same thing with one and seven. You can do four and four. Now, this is all going to be blank because I only have an eight channel here. But that's fine. You'll have all these options available relative to, you know, however many channels you have. Now, if you go into the main menu, right now I have the password turn off. It usually will prompt you for a password. But the first option you'll see is playback. Under playback, if you are familiar with our EL series recorders, it is, it's fairly similar. It's all self-explanatory, but what you will do, choose the camera or cameras that you want. Okay, so for now we'll just do camera one. Anything down here in the calendar that's blue is showing you there's recording on that date. So we can do the third. Once you've selected your camera and your date, you can press play down here. Right now, obviously, there was no, no actual camera being streamed at that time, but that's fine. Then what you can do is click this little slider bar here, this yellow bar, and you can click and drag that anywhere on your timeline that you need to. All right, now say you think something may have happened from channel one and then switch to channel two, you just click channel two, it'll keep the time and it will automatically adjust the grid for you. Camera three, four, five, and so on. And then you can just resume as normal. Take the slider bar wherever you want, it'll automatically adjust the time here, and that's about it for the playback. The playback is pretty simple. What you do, what you can notice here, this slider bar will change colors depending on how you're recording. Right now, this is recording continuous, which is 24-7, and it's blue. If you were recording any events, say motion, alarm, or anything of that nature, it'd be red. That You would see little red tick marks wherever the motion happened, or you had an alarm tripped. Now, if you find what you're looking for in playback and you want to export it, you'll just come into under export here, choose your camera, so for now we'll just do camera one, okay, you can generalize your search based on motion, alarm, or whatever you like, or you can search all. I'll just search all, and it's pretty simple. You do start time and end time, you can select a date, select your time, okay, and then once you've got all that set, you click search. It'll find every file within that start date and time and end date and time that you selected. You can lock the file. If you need to format the drive, the, any file that is locked will not be overwritten. And that's basically what this message says right here when you unlock it. If you want to double check before you waste your time and back up the footage, if it's incorrect, you can get a quick, click this little play button here. You get a quick overview of that file just to verify, oh yeah, okay, that's what I need. Then you choose that file, you click export. This is where you would select your USB device. Obviously right now I don't have one. But you select your USB device, click export, you can create a new folder in that device if you need to, and you'll get a progress bar that'll show you the, uh, the progress. Now, it's the same thing for event. You choose the camera you want, one, you choose your start date and time, okay? You choose the event you're looking for, motion, alarm, or VCA. VCA is you know, line crossing or face detect, depending on what your recorder supports, and you'll search. Here I don't have anything found, but that's okay. It's the same steps. You would search, you'll have the option to play, 
and then you can back it up the same way. Select your USB device and click export. Keep in mind, any part of the menu you're in, no matter what sub-menu you are in here, you have this button here for live view. Anytime you need to get back to live view, just click and it'll go there. So now we can go into manual. So let's say this is an eight channel, as you can see. If I'm recording all eight cameras, leave all eight cameras is on. If, you, if I only have, say, five cameras, I don't need six, seven, and eight recording because it will still record a blank channel. So you turn them on. Then two months later, I add more cameras. You just turn them right back on and the recording will resume normal. Okay, see it saves, saves it automatically. Now, if you go under alarm, obviously this DVR does not support alarm inputs and outputs, but this is, this is what, where you would basically configure it, or you'd get a status here. You'd get the alarm output number, the name that you choose, and the trigger. Now here you can do a diagnostic on one of your cameras, you know, the video quality. So you can choose all, or you can, you know, just say channel one. Okay, and this takes just a sec, you click diagnose, just wait a minute, you'll see this A2 for analog 2, it turns to analog 1, it says my stream is normal, it tells me the time that I did it, and that's it. HDD obviously will give you uh, general information about your hard drive, the capacity. Right now my status is normal, it's set to RNW, which is read and write. It's local, which means it's in the machine, it's not uh, a network drive or an external drive, and the group that it's in. I can only do group one because this particular recorder only supports one drive. If you want to edit any of that information, you would choose here at edit, but again, it only supports one drive, won't let me edit that because there's no way to edit. There's nothing I can do. Advanced, this is where you can configure your grouping. Like I said, I can't do it, but you can choose the group here. You can choose, say, okay, cameras one through four are going to be in group one, choose another group, and five through eight are going to be in a second group and apply that and then you'll have different groupings for different cameras that way you're not stressing out one drive all the time now under record you'll see first thing you'll see is your schedule schedule is pretty easy if you want to right now everything is blue for channel one actually all my channels but for channel one monday through sunday is all blue which here you can see is continuous or 24 7. if you wanted to change that to motion you can just come over here, you'll see a little pencil icon, click the green for motion, and highlight the area you want motion. Okay, so on and so forth. Now, say you needed it to be specific. You want from 10.30 in the morning to noon to be motion, or to be, you know, whatever you need. You just click edit, okay? And here, you can make it very specific, whatever you need. So we're going to do from 3, you know, 302 or, you know, whatever you may need. Choose what you want. You want it 24-7 or you want it motion. And then you continue just as you normally would. So now it's going to be, I didn't save it, but it'll display here. You'll see your specific settings that you made, the specific times. And then what you can do once you have that, you can copy to whichever channels you want to copy to or you can do all, OK, and apply. Now for parameters, this is basically, again, if you're familiar with the EL series, this is encode. You change it from 720 to 1080p, you can change the stream to video only, or if you're recording audio, video and audio. Uh, you've got your bit rate here, you've got your bit rate here, your frame rate, and then you have mainstream and uh, extra stream. Here's your extra stream. So you can put it at D1 or whatever you prefer. Whatever's best for your specific environment. You can make a few different holiday settings here. You can name your holiday, whatever you prefer. Enable it. Okay. Now under camera, this is a tribrid. So this, this particular unit does support two IP cameras. What you can do, obviously, mine's not on the network, or otherwise it would have found all of the, it'll automatically find all of the supported IP cameras on the network, or you can click refresh if it doesn't, and it will find them. You can do that. You can upgrade certain cameras, okay? You can choose a camera, upgrade the firmware if you need to, or you can do a manual add. You can manually add the IP, 
uh, the protocol, whether you're going to use the standard protocol, IPCAM or ONVIF, choose your port, your username and password, and add. And that's how you would add a camera. You would either select an add, you can do your upgrade here, you can delete them from here, and you can do your manual adding under custom adding. The OSD settings is not necessarily OSD, you know, shutter speed or backlight compensation, you know, like you would have in a PTZ. This is simply, you can click and drag here your timestamp, or that's your date and time, or you can choose here, you know, you want your camera name to be in the top right corner and apply, and you'll see they adjust to where you want. Or if you don't want them at all, you can turn them off. Okay, now you have no stamp. You can choose your time format. By default, it's going to be at 24 hour. If that bothers you and you need it in 12 hour, just come right here under main menu, camera management, OSD, and you can set it to the 12 hour format for you. The image, you can do your brightness, contrast, sharpness, things like that. The PTZ, you can set your presets, your patterns, you know, move it to where you want, zoom in, set your preset, clear the preset. Motion, you can mask, this is where you'll do your camera masking. Okay, so the top top part of the screen, now none of this is going to be seen by, is going to be recognizing motion. It's not going to record unless it's here where I have the uh, grid. You can do full screen, you can clear the whole thing if you don't want to record motion, you have your sensitivity here. All of this will have to be relative to different environments, but I'm sure you'll figure that out. Same thing with privacy masking. If you want to choose, you want to enable it and say you don't want that to show up. Done. Now you can't see anything there. And there's different zones, you can clear them. You know, we don't need that turned on for now. Same thing with video tampering. You turn it on, if anything, anybody tampers with your camera, turns it left, turns it right, up or down, it can send you a notification. It can send you, depending on what you set it to do, Video loss, same thing as video tampering. Camera goes down. VCA, the VCA is like I said, is gonna be your line crossing, things like that. You can draw a line or you can do whatever you need to do. You can change it to intrusion. Okay, I do not believe this particular recorder supports that so I won't be able to demonstrate it. But uh, you clear it out when you're done and apply everything if you you know get too deep don't want any of it anymore just restore it'll set it, set this part back to factory and that'll be it and under configuration the first thing you're gonna see is your general settings date and time uh, the date format this is where you're gonna set all this you can change your language if you need to you can enable the startup wizard or disable it same thing with password I have mine disabled you can configure your daylight savings, and then you have a couple more things here. You can name the device if you want, give it a number. How, how, you know, for now, it's f every five minutes of no activity, it's automatically going to log me out. And then network. Network here, if you want to use P2P, you enable your P2P, and you, you'll see your QR code here. Same thing with uh, DDNS. If you want to use DDNS, you enable it, you configure it here, save it everything will be just as normal. Now, under general, this is where you're going to see your IP address. By default, these are uh, going to be set to DHCP. Now, what you'll see is if I set this to DHCP here, I, you can enter any static IP that you need to on your network if you know what you want to use. If you don't and you prefer to use the DHCP to let it pull an address first from your router, you enable it. This will gray out. Save it. Now, you have to pay attention. This this area here will never show you the address that that DHCP pulls from your network. You will have to right click to get back to your menu, go to maintenance, okay, and under system info, you have network. This is where you will see under the uh, network settings, it's not really settings, this is just, uh, you know, statuses. This is where you'll see what IP address that DHCP pulled from your network. Then if you want to take keep that address, you just go back into configuration, go back to network under the extra net access, or I'm sorry, the general. Then you'll get rid of the DHCP, type in manually that address that it just pulled. You know it's available on your network, and you go from there. Okay, email. Email is the same thing, again, as the EL series recorders. You just enable it. 
okay your username and password your server which would be uh, the gmail.smtp.com okay you can have it uh, you know you have to enable SSL with Gmail you can do the attached picture so if you're gonna have snapshots be sent to you and then you know you can do SMMP you have a few different things under here you know your HTTP port if you need to change that and then under alarm obviously they're not available this DVR does not support it that's where you would configure them okay live view you can change your view here so say you wanted in the, you know the one camera and seven small cameras you wanted channel 8 to be the big one okay you click in here and select the 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 big square and double click 8 you'll see that goes to 8 and can, uh, channel number 8 there's no camera assigned to it so you can just add one back in there and then you'll apply that now if I went back to live view I don't know if you can see that or not this is now camera 8 this is now camera 1 clicking and dragging will work but when you reboot the machine it will go back Okay, now exceptions. Exceptions is just like abnormalities. Say you have you want it to alert you whenever the network goes down. The NIC is no longer connected to your network. So you can set it to do an audible warning, which what that means is the DVR will beep. Okay, you can have it send an email or it can trigger one of your alarm outs if your DVR supports it. And it's the same thing for any of these. Okay, if somebody logged in that you don't want, if there's an IP conflict with the recorder, if your hard drive is full or has an error, all of that. You just have to enable the uh, event hint, choose the one you want, and choose what you want to happen when this uh, exception type occurs. And then users, self explanatory where you can add, add your user, username and password, confirm your password. Now guest and operator is guest is user and operator is administrator All right, and then maintenance anything under maintenance is, is going to be statuses things like that you know this device info is showing you the model number of your recorder uh, the name that you chose and you can see your firmware version here same thing under camera under camera you'll see uh, you know the cameras enabled motion detect is being used doesn't necessarily mean it's being recorded but it's being used same thing with video loss, they're not being used, video tampering is not used, and video quality diagnostics right now is disabled. Now under record, you see that it is being used, which means it's recording. This one's recording video and audio, this is just video, 30 frames per second, you'll see your bit rate, 720p right now, and you know what it's recording. Is it recording manual, is it recording 24-7, or motion? Same thing with the alarms, I don't have any. Same thing with network, this is what we just talked about. This is where you'll see what your IP address is, your gateway, uh, if you configure your DNS servers, things like that. Same thing with your hard drive. This is just basic information about your hard drive. The group it's in, it's a local drive, it's inside. Set to read and write. The log information, okay, you can search for different things. You can search for uh, alarms that happened or exceptions like the exceptions of what we talked about the uh, hard drive being full or there being an error oops you can search that okay and then you can choose search this is everything that happened the details details will tell you what happened here type system was running everything seems good here Okay, and you know, so on and so forth for whatever uh, major type of alarm that you choose. Importing and exporting is the config files. If you get a DVR, you set it up perfectly, you've got it exactly the way you want it. I would recommend you export uh, your config file to a USB or to a computer that you know is going to stay uh, with you. You're not getting rid of it anytime soon. You can come back later and import that if you ever end up getting a new DVR or God forbid something happens to this current DVR and we have to repair or replace it. You can just import it there, save it all, and you know that'll be that. I don't have any way to import anything. I don't have a USB. The upgrade is where you'll do a local upgrade. If you had a USB, you would choose your USB device, choose the uh, file, so it would be firmware, and you upgrade. You can also do it via FTP. If you had an FTP server and you stored some firmware in it, 
you can put the address here and do the upgrade via that as well. The default, you have a few different types of defaults. Uh, there's restore, factory, and restore to inactive. If you restore it to inactive, you are going to have to reinitialize the drive and everything starts from very, very basic defaults. The factory default, you don't have to reinitialize the drive and you know certain things like that. The network detect, um, it's just gonna show you if if I had the, the network connected, you know, the uh, sending and receiving, a TX and RX. It's basically the traffic on your network. HDD detect is the same thing. It's going to, you can do different tests. You can do a short test, an expanded test. Uh, it'll find, you know, bad sectors. If it's not spinning up properly, uh, you know, anything. Anything that may be going wrong with the drive, those will find it. So you have a bad sector test here, which somebody has already uh, attempted and canceled on this particular recorder. And I'm not going to do that. It'll take some time. And then you have shutdown. So for now, I'm just going to go ahead and shut this down. And uh, I hope the video was helpful. If you have any other questions that may not have been explained here, hopefully some of our other, other videos may help you. If not, please do not hesitate to give us a call.